Here's another in NBC's great parade of new shows. Now, Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Hello there, this is Diamond. You know, if you've ever got a few idle minutes and you need a good chuckle to keep you going, just turn to the personals in any of the local papers. Now, I'm a guy with a strange sense of humor, and it really takes something right out of left field to get a spasm out of my funny bone. Well, just listen to this one out of the Little Rock Bugle. Oh, yeah. Bachelor, sincere young man, four feet ten, 190 pounds, handsome, out of work for a year, desires to meet a woman who can straighten him out. (laughs) See what I mean? If this guy does find a woman who can straighten him out, she'll probably do it with a flat iron. Oh, and, uh, and get this one. Young man with large personality... Desires to meet woman with big bank account and small sense of humor. Object, murder. Oh, excuse me, that's merger. Oh, and here's a real wizard. Attractive, intelligent girl, 30 years old with bubbling enthusiasm for life. Neither smokes, drinks, nor stays up late. Vegetarian and hates comic books. Would like playmate who enjoys active recreation. Hmm. There'll be a month of fasting after that one. Oh, yeah, I knew I had something else. That case I got mixed up in last week. If you think those personals are silly, will you hear about this? It all started about 11 o'clock one morning in my office. Mr. Richard Diamond, private detective? Uh, I was out with a hula dancer last night. Wait, I'll look in the mirror and tell you. Come on in so you can see, too. (laughs) My name is Jerome J. Jerome. Well, I'm not going to ask you what the J stands for. You are Mr. Diamond, aren't you? It's my face all right, but I'm sure the rest of me is on vacation. Don't you feel well? I don't feel at all. Ever danced the hula for six hours straight? I'm a past master of all forms of dancing. Care to waltz? What? Forget it. What can I do for you, Mr. Jerome? It's not what you can do for me, Mr. Diamond. It's what I can do for you. Well, that's a switch, but let's give it a whirl. What can you do for me, Mr. Jerome? I'm a millionaire, Mr. Diamond. Well, bless your little pointed head. (laughs) I'm also a G-man. I knew this would jump the track sooner or later. Tell me, if you're a G-man and a millionaire, where do you work? The U.S. Mint? I write songs, too. Uh, By the light of the silvery moon, I want to... Mr. Jerome. Yes, did you like it? You didn't by any chance write Swanee River? No, I believe Stephen Foster wrote that. You don't say. Yes, he stole the melody from me. I think we'd better waltz after all. Oh, Mr. Diamond, that's ridiculous. I'm glad somebody noticed. But you take a good zippy foxtrot now. Oh, now, wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, you follow beautifully. I went to Vassar. Now, slow down before I pick you up and stuff you into a bottle. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, now, would you mind telling me how long you've been hiding out with the squirrels? Squirrels? Oh, I have a mink farm. You should do well. Look, Mr. Jerome, I think maybe you better go soak yourself in some hot tar or something. I came here to do you a favor, Mr. Diamond, and I do not intend to leave until you hear me out. Oh, well. Okay, what is it? You need a bodyguard. Operator, give me Bellevue. Mr. Diamond, please, there's no need to call Bellevue. Oh, stop being so narrow-minded. They'll give you a nice, quiet room, all by a little old lonesome. Well, go ahead and call them if you want to, but it will do you no good. Why not? They'll just think you're crazy. I'm on the staff there. Oh, yes, I should have known. I think you're making fun of me. I came up here because I knew of your reputation as a detective, and I want to help you with your work. You you get in trouble, don't you, all the time? Uh, habitually. Well, I want to protect you. Now, that's nice, but I really don't need a bodyguard. Hmm... Early stages of schizophrenia, also a slight persecution complex. Have you seen a good psychiatrist, Mr. Diamond? It's certainly a thought. Well, when do I start work? Well, you see, it's like this. I'm awfully sorry, but I have my own nutcracker. Oh, no, no, no. I mean as your bodyguard. I'm afraid the requirements are too tough. What are they? Well, first you have to find a freshly murdered corpse. It's kind of like a treasure hunt. Oh, I've got that. 
You got what? A freshly murdered corpse. That's one of the reasons I came up to see you. I thought you'd like to know. Oh, well, now, I'll tell you what you do. You go back and see if the corpse is still there. If it is, call me at once, okay? All righty. I'm off. Amen. Uh, Mr. Diamond? Yes? Remember, hopping hot toads have no hair. Oh, no. Mr. Diamond? Huh? Oh. I thought you'd better know something. I can only be your bodyguard for a week. <laughs> I'm getting married. Congratulations. Who's the lucky girl? It's Miss America. But don't breathe it around. I want time to check her measurements. I'll send you a fruitcake. Just bring it in. You're invited. Goodbye. Diamond's Rest Home. We specialize in nervous disorders, ingrown scalps, and the world's largest bowling alley. <laughs> oh, don't laugh. If you'd seen what just walked out of here, you'd go back to yo-yos. Well, what did just walk out of there? I'm not sure, but he had lovely blonde hair. He... Did? Yeah, all over him. Rick, what in the world are you talking about? I'm talking about nothing in the world. Come on, tell Helen. Well, I've got to get it all straight first. If I figure it out, I'll come over and we can throw sesame seeds at each other. Oh, I'd love to. When will you be here? As soon as I shine up my elk's tooth and lock the office. Bye. <laughs> Well, I usually get some screwy ones, but this one was the topper of the season. I had a hunch that Jerome would be back, so I locked the office and did a quick sneak down the back stairs. I grabbed a cab, and ten minutes later, I was sitting in Helen Asher's study at 975 Park Avenue. Do you think his story about the body had any truth behind it? Well, he told me he was a millionaire, a G-man, owned a mink farm, and was going to marry Miss America. <laughs> now tell me you think there's some truth behind it, and I'll have you committed. Well, all right, but if he continues to pester you, you... You ought to call the authorities about him. Yeah, I guess I'll have to. Poor little man. Mm. It's a poor little man like that who ends up hanging his grandmother on a meat hook. Oh, he doesn't sound dangerous to me. Ah, sometimes the harmless ones work themselves right into a storm. Now, take me. You'd never guess that somewhere in the back of my head a square knot is being tied. Rick, now stop that. See? You didn't know it, but at high noon, I grow fangs and long claws. Now, stop it. You do that every time a good-looking girl walks past. Really? Ah. <laughs> you complete ah. idiot. Ah. <laughs> Rick, the phone's ringing. Oh, I hope it's happy. It might be something important. Oh, Rick, you're mussing my hair. Uh, now, now, stop that and answer the phone. Oh, you woman are fiend. Uh, Harold Appleknocker's happy home for hogs. Rick. Who is this? What's the matter with you all? Ain't you got your ear trumpet trip right? I know it's you, Diamond. No, it ain't. This is old Harold Appleknocker. I'll let you talk to my gal, Lula Bell. Say hello to the lieutenant, Lula Bell. Howdy. Now, Diamond, you stop that. I just got back from my vacation, and things are already so confused, I may turn in my badge before the day is over. Well, come on down to the hog ranch, and I'll cook you up some hocks. Now, come on, Diamond. I'm not in the mood for any of your wild humor. Oh, what's the matter with you, Walt? Did you catch any fish? Oh, wait till I tell you. I got one that was so big... Is that why you call me? Huh? Oh, oh no. Some guy's been pestering me for the last half an hour. Wants to know where you are. Says he's an old friend. Oh, his name wasn't Jerome J. Jerome, was it? Well, that was the first name he gave me. The last time he called, he said he was a G-man. That's Jerome. Want me to tell him where you are? You do it, I'll handcuff you to Sergeant Otis. Oh, don't say that name to me ever again. Why, Walt, you sound bitter. That hornet had worked nights just messing things up in homicide. Lieutenant Waldo is taking calcium shots. The chief has locked himself in his office. Won't even open the door for food. Well, if Jerome calls again, tell him I've joined the South Siberian Balloon Corps. Now, wait a minute. Well, what do you want now, bonehead? Uh, it's that Jerome guy. He wants Diamond again. Says he found the body right where he left it. What? Diamond! Now, you wait a minute, Walt. What are you doing? Oh, oh, picking up my eardrum. You better watch that yelling. You'll have an office full of hogs. Keep Otis out of this. Then I'll yell if I want to. Now, you get down here and explain about this body. Walt, I don't know anything about the body. The Jerome guy is off his trolley. Yeah? Well, if there's the smallest possibility of a corpse turning up and you're involved, it'll turn up. Walt, you say it, but you don't mean it. I don't, huh? You get down here in ten minutes, or I'll have a warrant out for you, and I mean that. Now, step on it. Now, by heaven, I'll forget modern police procedure and drag out the rubber hose. Why don't you use Sergeant Otis's tongue? You could beat an elephant to death with it. I'm not kidding. 
I've heard two words, diamond and body. And that means overtime in this department. Now get down here. All right, but you're mean. Oh, and diamond. Yes? Pick me up some bicarbonate of the way over, will you? I'll get you something. But don't spill it on your car. It'll take the paint off. Bye. Rick, what was that all about? Oh, Levinson's got heartburn again. That nut that wandered into my office told Otis about the body he says he's found. Oh, Walt didn't believe him, did he? Walt's been a cynic ever since we were introduced. I'll see you later this evening, honey. All right, Rick. What do you want to do? Helen. What? What you said. I had a mental picture of Walt eating his way through his desk, so I got some bicarbonate at the drugstore and hurried over before he got to the wiring and shorted out the whole department. As usual, the king of the forest met me in the squad room. Well, you're in Dutch, Shamus. I guess you're right, Sergeant Otis. How about lending me your wooden shoes? Oh, uh, what do you mean, wise guy? They ain't wood. And why do you use a crowbar instead of a shoehorn? Yeah, very funny. You better go on in. Lieutenant's liable to start breaking things. I hope he doesn't use his bare hands. Yeah? Why? Well, your head's liable to get in the way and you'll be crippled for life. Uh... All right, Walt. Stop chewing on that desk. Here's your bicarbonate. What are you talking about? Now you listen to me, Diamond. That's like telling a man to turn up his hearing aid in a bombing. You can stop being cute. That guy, Jerome J. Jerome, phoned just before you came in, and he sticks to his story about the body, but he won't tell us where he is. You don't really believe him, do you, Walt? He's nuts. Well, he did say something about playing quarterback for Notre Dame, but if you're mixed up in this, I can't take any chances. Oh, don't be an idiot, Walt. This little guy, Jerome, came waltzing into my office this morning and... Uh, Lieutenant. Oh. What is it? Uh, that guy, Jerome's on the phone again. He wants to talk to Diamond. Rick, pick up that phone and find out about that body. Oh, now, come on, Walt. You can use the extension in here. Go on. I promise you, you'll be sorry. You pick it up and say hello. Not to this guy, you won't. you will come back with hopping, hop toads have no hair or something. Hello, Jerome. Oh, Mr. Diamond. Good, 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 good. I've been trying to get you for some time. The body's here, all right. Where, Jerome? Anyone here? No, Jerome. Well, I thought maybe they had the line tapped. They do that, you know. Yes, Jerome. Now, where are you? I'm at the Osterham place. And if you don't want this corpse, I'm calling in Hawthorne of the death squad. Jerome, please. Now, where are you? The Osterham place on 74th Street. I'll be right over and don't let the corpse get away. Oh, it won't. I'm sitting on it. Oh. Well... Did you find out where he is? Oh, he said the Osterham place on 74th Street. What the devil's that? The Osterham place? That's old man Hoster Osterham's home. You know the eccentric old millionaire that died last year? Oh, how did Jerome get in? It's been turned into kind of a museum. The old boy had quite a collection of rare antiques. And when he died, he left the house to the city as sort of a show place. You mean he's open to the public? Yeah. Well, well, let's go. Jerome's probably found a mummy for us. <laughs> On the way over, I told Walt about Jerome's sweet little visit in my office, and the lieutenant was all for stopping off for a straitjacket. When we got there, we looked out of the squad car at an old three-story brownstone. But more interesting was the sign that hung from the door. Closed Saturdays. And you guessed it. It was Saturday. We got out of the car and went up. Well, don't just stand there. Try the door. I'm with you. Got an axe? Ring the bell. If Jerome's in there, he'll probably answer. Oh, anything to make the police force happy. Mr. Diamond. What is that? That is Jerome, over in the window. You will have to climb in here. Come on, Walt. We can't do that. Who's that with you, Diamond? Oh, uh, this is Lonely Levinson, Jerome. He collects bodies. Oh, good. He'll just love this one. Climb in. Coming, all? Oh, go ahead. If there's a corpse in there, it's in the line of duty. I'll give you a boost. I can make it. Watch your real old fat baby. You shut up. Oh, there. All right, Red Heart, you're next. Up, up, and away! Oh, I'm glad to see you both. I was getting tired of sitting around with her. The conversation was so one-sided. Sitting around with who? Her. Rick. Yeah. Do I qualify, Mr. Diamond? Hmm, young girl. Been dead quite a while. Uh, uh, Jerome. Yes, boss. Oh, oh, Ricky, how you found it? Well, this room is supposed to be sealed up. Sealed up? Yes, the building is a museum. Uh, not a very good one. I have much better things in my apartment. Uh-oh, we're I... losing him. Uh, uh, Jerome, how you found her? Oh, 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 oh. Well, when the building is open to the public, they take you on tours. When we passed this room, we noticed it was sealed. 
I asked why, and the guard said it was because the late Mr. Osterham had stipulated in his will that the rest of the house could be shown but not this room. It was his private study. And he said if he ever wanted to come back, he didn't want a lot of people cluttering it up. Uh, who broke it in? I did. You did? Don't they have burglar alarms in this museum? Mr. Diamond, Lonely Levinson has an extreme case of supersensitivity. Does he always snap like that? Only when he hasn't been fed. Why did you break in? You should be careful, Mr. Lonely Levinson. You bite someone. Have you been checked for rabies? Now you listen to me. Walt, Walt, Walt. Uh, uh, Jerome, why did you break in? Well, it's perfectly obvious. When the guard told me the story, I played along with him. Of course, I knew it was just a trick to throw me off. Of course. Oh, would you mind turning your head? It's much better if you just chew on that curtain. Well, I, I waited until they closed the place. Then I came back, jimmied this window, and found the body. Then I came to you, Mr. Diamond. <laughs> Simple? Oh, sure. Rick, what are you doing? Oh, just looking at the dead girl. Come here. Ah, you find something? No. Oh, got on an anklet. Name is, uh... uh strike a match, will you? Oh, wait a minute. There. Oh. Adelaide. Looks like she's been dead quite a while. Yeah. Hmm? But Jerome, when you found... Hey, Jerome. What? He's gone. Oh, we're a couple of swell sleuths. He's not out on the street. Must have climbed out and run for it. I'll send out a general on him. Yeah, I would if I were you. A guy like that shouldn't be running around loose. He's allowed to wind up on Stromboli. Well, Walt put out a general alarm on Jerome and then called in the rest of the experts to give him the dope on the dead girl. I didn't wait around because I had a hunch that Jerome would find me again. I was right. Because at that moment, he was sitting in my office behind my desk. Diamond Detective Agency? Rick? Who is this? Oh, now, stop clowning. This is Helen. Never heard of you. Why don't you dames leave me alone? Uh, by the light of the silvery moon. I guess I'll have to write some new lyrics. Oh, dear. Yes, what is it? Well, you sure got there in a hurry. Who is this? Now, you stop that, Diamond. You know very well who this is. What do you want, stupid? Stupid? Yeah, rhymes with Cupid. Could do a song on it. Like to hear my latest? I've been working on the railroad all the living long devil day. Is what kind of a song do you suppose I could write with stupid and Cupid? Dear? Oh, hello, Mr. Diamond. Hey, what's going on? Well, hello, Jerome. Taking my calls for me? Yes, and wait till you hear the pixie I've got on the line. <laughs> Here. Uh, thanks. Hello, Walt. Rick? Yeah, you were talking to Jerome. I just came in. I might have known it. Don't let him out of your sight. Uh, of course not. Now, uh, what did you find out? Oh, oh yeah. The dead girl is one Adelaide Smith. Had a record. Blackmail artist. Been dead about three days. Working for a Patrick Mahaffey attorney on Pine Street. She was strangled. Mm, blackmail artist, huh? Very smooth, or used to be. Any line on Mahaffey's background? We're checking into that now. Well, find out one thing more for me, will you? If I can, what? Uh, when that museum was open to the public. Well, that's easy. I'll call you back. Hold on to that Jerome guy. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, uh, Walt. Yeah? Jerome's gone again. What? Bye. Oh, uh, sorry to bust in, but you seem to be missing your secretary. Come in. Come in. My secretary just walked out the other day. I haven't had time to get another from the agency. Are you uh, Patrick Mahaffey? Yes. What can I do for you? Uh, was your secretary's name Adelaide Smith? Why, yes. How did you know? Oh, from the police. They just put a tag on her down at the morgue. Good Lord. She... She isn't. She certainly is. The morgue is very choosy about its tenants. Oh, that's terrible. What was it, an accident? Well, if it was, the insurance companies are going to have to set up a new system. She was strangled. Oh, how horrible. Uh, yes. You, uh, you're an attorney, aren't you, Mr. Mahaffey? Why, yes. Are, are you from the police? I just left them. What kind of an attorney? Why, just general law. Ever do anything you could be blackmailed for? What? Why, why, of course not. Ever have any business with the Osterham estate? Mm, no. No, I never handled any of the Osterham business. Why? Oh, uh, oh, nothing. I'll see you later, Mr. Mahaffey. <laughs> Homicide, Lieutenant Levinson. Walt Diamond, what did you find out about Mahaffey? Rick, there's something fishy. You've got to stop going to these cheap restaurants. Oh, be serious. That Mahaffey guy was executor for the Osterham estate. What? Yeah, funny coincidence. Coincidence, my shoulder holster. 
I just left him, and he told me he'd never even heard of the Osterham estate. Now, why would he do that? He's certainly smart enough to know we could check. Maybe he wanted time enough to skip. You think he's mixed up in the killing? Oh. Did you find out when the museum was open to the public? Yeah, the city completed the alterations two days ago. And if it means anything to you, that room was sealed up on the last day. Oh, thanks, Walt. And something else. We checked in the dead girl's bank account. She had 22000 in it. A lot for a secretary, huh? Yeah, but not too much for a high-class blackmailer. Do one more thing for me, Walt. Find out if Osterham had any heirs. Now, what good will that do? I want to find out just how many people would know about that sealed room before the public got wind of it. Okay, I'll have my happy picked up right away. No, no, no. Don't do it yet. I want ten minutes with him. Where, uh, where's his house? I got it right here. 93rd Street, West End Avenue. But I don't see why you won't let me grab my happy. We know he's lying. You just check on that will. I'm going to throw you a killer. <laughs> I left the phone booth and headed for West End Avenue and Patrick Mahaffey's residence. Strangely enough, it was on the west side of town. And when I got there, I spotted a green sedan in front of the house. I started up to the front door and Mahaffey met me halfway. He had a suitcase and he was in a hurry. Oh, it's you. Uh, your memory's getting better. Come on, you don't want to leave right now. Let's go back inside. But I have to catch a plane. I'm leaving town on business. Oh, I bet you are. Let's go. Now, wait just a minute. You have no legal right. Do I have to show you my biceps? Oh, uh, well, all right. But make it brief. I'm late as it is. Now, just what is this all about? I thought you said you didn't have any business with the Osterham estate. Why, that's right. I checked. Oh. Hmm. Just exactly what was your capacity? Well, I, uh... I handled the incomes on the trust account. I was also the executor of the will. You wouldn't be handling it now, would you? When Mr. Osterham died and I executed his will, my job was done. Were there any heirs? Two. Neither of them were able to hear the reading. Who did hear it? Just an official from the city. Why weren't the heirs present? Because one of them couldn't be found. The other one was in a kennel. In a kennel? A cocker spaniel. He received $10,000. Oh. I bet he rolled right over on his back. Who was the other heir? Mr. Osterham's nephew. He hasn't been heard from in ten years. He went to France to study hat designing, but hat jobs were very scarce, so he just vanished. He was rather eccentric. Oh. Now we come to the jackpot question. What you got in the bag? What? You look a little green. Open it up. Now, look, you can't do this to me. It's against the law. Where's your warrant? I got a fistful of them, see? Oh. All right. There. Dump it out. But I've got to catch a plane if I dump, dump all this... Dump it out. Well, well, well. Yes. It's a lot of money, isn't it? Sure is. Isn't it lovely? Well, I'm glad you like it. Go ahead. Take half. I was hoping you wouldn't say that. Why not? Because I'll hate myself for the next two years. Put it back in the bag and let's go. But I'm offering you $100,000. You must be a fool. Oh, this is a very elementary deduction. Come on, you can figure it out and sing sing. I don't think so. You should have looked in my pocket, too. Oh, I hope that's an old pipe you're pointing at me. I hate to disappoint you. It's a 38. <laughs> now you're turning green. Now you better answer it. It's the police and they know I'm here. All right, but you say one thing wrong and I'll have to shut you up permanently. Yes? Is Diamond there? Yes. Let me talk to him. All right. You were right. It's for you. Go ahead, talk to him. But I warn you again. Hello? I'm getting tired of dialing. Everything all right? Just dandy. What did you find out? There were two heirs, and get this. One of them was a... Cocker Spaniel. Yeah, how did you know? What else? Well, that guy Mahaffey's a crook. We checked and found out that there's only about 10000 left in the trust fund. The bank says Mahaffey had power of attorney, and he'd drawn out about 200000 You got him there with you? Yeah, but it's all in the way you look at it. Oh, it's like that, huh? Let's see if you can stall him. There ought to be a prowl car nearby. Goodbye, Walt. Did you get the information you wanted? Yeah, you killed the girl. Probably because she found out you were dipping into the till. You paid her 10000 and got her over to the museum and strangled her. I took the money, yes. But you're just guessing about the murder. Uh-uh. No one else but you knew about that closed room until after it was sealed and the public was told. The girl was killed the day before the room was sealed. You figured she'd never be found, but a little guy named Jerome J. Jerome went in and found the body. And if I'm right, little Jerome is really the missing heir. Impossible. Wasn't the museum rigged with a burglar alarm? Yes, well, we found Jerome inside and the window open. He'd climbed in, but the alarm hadn't gone off. Simple. A member of the family might still have a key. He found the alarm and disconnected it. I don't believe it. But you must, Mr. Mahaffey. What? No, it can't be. Oh. Well, <laughs> you really throw a beautiful left jab, Mr. Dime. Oh, thanks for turning his head, Jerome. Now, would you mind telling me something just to sort of clear things up a little? 
You mean, am I really cracked? No. Like Mr. Mahaffey said, uh, just a little <laughs> eccentric. You see, I found out the money was missing, so I looked up the girl. She told me for 20000 she'd show me the thief. She told me to meet her at the museum that night, and the thief would be there. When I got there, she was dead. Well, I knew I couldn't solve the case myself, and if anyone found out who I really was, I might be held. So I became Jerome J. Jerome and hired Richard Diamond. Correction, I was not hired. Correction again. You receive a very substantial check as soon as the estate is settled. And thank you. Thank you. Oh, you might do me one more favor. If you know anyone who would like to buy a hat, I have got some dillies. I'll speak to Hedda Hopper in the morning. <laughs> Well, it, it's lovely, but... But you don't like it? Well, yes. Uh, well, what's the matter? I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is? It's a hat. A hat? Certainly. Here, here, give it to me. Now, look, you put it on this way, <laughs> see? Well, what are you laughing at? Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> I might even do a Hildegard if I got the right bookings. A pair of long gloves. All of a sudden, my heart sings. <laughs> When I remember little things, the way you Rick, used now to... now stop it. I will not. I may have found a way to make a million. You're just jealous, that's all. I've got the hat and I'm pretty. Just sing a song. And finish it for a change. Oh, I'd love to. I don't know from nothing, baby. All I know is I love you. I don't care for nothing, baby If I knew you cared for me, too So won't you make your mind up, baby Tell me that you love me, please do For I don't know from nothing, baby All I know is I love you We bought a sponsor All I know is I love you yeah, I finished it. Are you happy? Oh, well, yes. But where did the band come from? Did you like it? <laughs> yes, it was great. Well, if it's great, don't ask questions. Uh, thank you, Von Monroe. Uh, honey, the name is Diamond. Oh, Mr. Monroe, I just love your record. No, no, baby, the name is Diamond. Mr. Monroe, ever since the first time I heard you sing, I've... Come here, I want to tell you something. I'm sorry, I... Racing with the moon, sailing through the midnight blue. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg. Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in the cast were Wilms Herbert, Joseph Kearns, and Stanley Waxman. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written by Blake Edwards and directed by Richard Sandville. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the current screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. Now, this is John Storm inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. <laughs> You don't have to go to Alabama. You don't have to eat ham hocks and butter beans. All you have to do is enjoy Phil Harris and his ever-loving wife, Alice Fay, when they return to NBC tomorrow for 30 minutes of Southern Fried Joy lend an ear to Phil Harris, Alice Fay show, returning tomorrow on most of these same NBC stations. You're tuned for the stars on NBC.